Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's free public webinar entitled Enhanced Workforce Management with the new TPC Fusion System. My name is Ryan Smith, Product Manager here with TPC Training, and we're joined by Tim Jacobs, our Vice President and General Manager of our Enterprise Solutions today. And he's going to walk us through kind of the TPC Fusion system, how it got to be where it is and some of the functionality here. And really from a um, kind of a training perspective, so, so some of the best practices we can follow using this system to help manage our training programs. So today uh, is a live session here. We got people coming into the session right now, so welcome everyone. Um, what we're going to do today is actually uh, take questions and answers throughout the session as well and be able to answer them by the end of the session. So this is a live event. And so for anyone who is here, uh, you should see on your toolbar at the bottom of the toolbar, a Q&A button. If you click that Q&A button and you type in a question and submit, it should come right to me and Tim and we should be able to answer those questions uh, by the end of the session. So feel free to keep those coming as well as a way to interact with us here. I also want to let everyone know that today's session is being recorded. So this session will actually be available on the TPC training website about uh, two business days after today's October 8th, 2020 date. So um, also I wanted to let everyone know that the PDF of this presentation slide will be available for those um, who come back to our website and see the recording as well. Before I hand it over to Tim to walk through Fusion, I want to get to know who's here just a little bit more um, with a short little poll, a quick three question poll I'm going to launch. So what we're going to see here is three questions pop up on your screen somewhere right about now. And so we got three questions um, and you can basically click on or tap on your answer uh, that best describes your answer to this question. The first one being, does your organization presently use a learning management system to manage training of your employees? Yes, no, or maybe you're not sure. Uh, number two, what best describes your role at your organization? Are you a technician or operator? Are you a manager or supervisor? Are you the HR training director, safety manager, or other? And then finally, question number three, how well documented would you say your on the job training is at your facility? Now we're talking about when they're done with the classroom, done with the classes, and they get out onto the floor. Um, how well documented is that process when they're, let's say job shadowing or uh, following on the job training best practices with that mentor or that trainer? Um, and uh, we can kind of understand where you are there because we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well today. All right, the questions are flowing in give you about 10 more seconds to get those answers in, getting some good answers here. All right, it looks like the answers have evened off, so I think we're good to end the poll. And what I'm gonna do is actually share the results of this poll with you all here, and we can talk about the most common answers. So there we go, you should be seeing the results of the poll now showing up on your screen. So most of you already do have a learning management system that you are using, whether it be our existing learning management system um, or uh, another company's learning management system. So yes, 47% of you followed by uh, actually just behind that 41% of you are not using a learning management system right now. So uh, we can actually learn a little bit more about um, what that takes to run a learning management system and how you can use it. The second question, most of you are supervisors and managers. So 41% of you are managers and supervisors of your department. And also uh, the HR training group has a good showing today at 26% of you on the call. And then finally, how well documented is the on the job training at your facility? Uh, it's basically all over the map. So some of you believe it's well documented at 29. Some of you are neutral at 41 and not well documented at 29. So basically it's all over the map. And you know what? That tells the story right there about on the job training. It can be, it can really be sporadic and chaotic um, trying to track progress of that. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. All right, so now that we know a little bit about who's here, uh, I will, without further ado, hand it over to Tim. Thanks for being here, Tim. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, and thank you everybody for joining today. I uh, appreciate the time to get to spend a, uh, a little bit with, with you all uh, and talk you through uh, what Fusion is. Um, but we're gonna start a little bit farther back and we're gonna start 
start by talking about what TPC training is. So just to give you a very high level um, understanding, TPC has been in the training business for, the, for a very long time, since 1969, and actually has been in the learning management system business even uh, for a while now, since 2005. So a good, good 15 to 16 years of, of uh, experience in the learning management system as, as well. Um, you know, we're, we're delivering thousands of hours of content uh, through both learning management systems in a digital environment, as well as through uh, scheduled training classes and on the instructor led side of things, uh, you know, over 110,000 uh, active students. Um, and you obviously have some, some numbers and data around uh, increase in knowledge gains and reduction in, in equipment downtime. I want to go over a, a couple of the different products that TPC offers. And the only reason I want to go over this is because it's going to really tie in well uh, when we start talking about Fusion and the ability to deliver all of these different products through that one existing kind of platform. Um, so just, just bear with me for a second here through a couple of PowerPoint slides around, you know, what TPC offers. And, and first we'll start with our, our technical skills library. Technical skills library is really broken into a couple different components. It's, it's our core competencies and our specific competencies. And there's over eight, 800 hours of training uh, available within those different competencies from, from your basic electrical, basic mechanical, all the way up into some of the more specific things around air conditioning, refrigerations, water, wastewater, et cetera. Um, we also have, a safety training library. Right? We have over 130 safety training courses that are broken into general uh, regulatory compliance, laboratory safety, and HAZWOPR. Um, within that, um, you know, we're able to offer an OSHA 10 and OSHA 30 uh, equivalency programs um, and, you know, offer this full motion um, video content um, that I would stack up against any other safety library that I've seen. I mentioned earlier the instructor-led training side of the business where we're offering both um, self, uh, excuse me, both uh, on-site training. So you can have an, a, one of our instructors come on site to your facility and um, have them deliver training around electrical safety, around pumps, whatever the case may be. Uh, we also have our open enrollment seminars. We're holding 2,000 across the across the country on a yearly basis. And this year, uh, due to the, the environment that we're in, really, you know, we've, we've uh, gotten into virtual instructor-led training, right? So the ability to deliver that same uh, instructor-led training experience, and it sometimes uh, can even be a better instructor-led training experience through a virtual setting. Recently, uh, TPC uh, acquired a simulation library. Um, simulations being um, both in a, an installed version and in a cloud-based version, uh, the ability to deliver kind of application type training uh, to add on to the knowledge training that historically TPC has been able to deliver. Um, you can see we've got courses around uh, simulation around troubleshooting electrical circuits, control circuits, motor circuits, et cetera. Um, you know, activities within those, including, you know, how to, how to properly lock out, tag out, using multimeters, working with wires, replacing, repairing, and really a nice way to kind of understand, um, you know, how the effect of, of a parts changer, uh, what that may have on your organization from a dollar perspective. We also have a mobile forms kind of skills verification uh, mobile forms product. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about this when we start getting into Fusion a little bit and give you a little bit more detail. But really this is a way to deliver both your skills verification, so kind of on, on the job training uh, type exercises and evaluations, as well as any other forms that you may have around safety inspections, uh, safety audits, whatever the case may be. And on, on top of that, you know, TPC has been experienced in delivering customized training. Um, we have a, an entire group uh, on the consulting services side that is able to go to your facility, um, sit down with you, talk about your training, talk about what your curriculum should potentially look like based on the roles and functions that those roles have within your organization. As well as take any content that you have already um, developed into in, in like a PowerPoint or some of your s SOPs and processes and take those and build those out into uh, more of a structured online delivery method. We've also added on a workforce management kind of uh, environmental health and safety solution around employee and contractor management and incident management. Um, the ability to track your contractors that are coming on site, make sure that they're taking the training that's necessary uh, for them to be allowed on site, uh, allow you to uh, handle their, their access, make sure that they're 
compliance before they're able to access your facility. Um, and then on the incident side, you know, allow you to manage uh, those incidents that do occur within your facility and track and report on those incidents uh, in order to, you know, help you to de determine what are the, some of the causes of some of the major incidents that are occurring within your facilities. All of that gets us to fusion. Right, so the, the whole reason that we're here today is to talk about the fusion workforce management solution. And, and fusion, um, I, I mentioned earlier, TPC has been in the learning management system game for a number of years now. Um, this is kind of the next evolution of a learning management system in our mind. This is not just that learning management system where you're able to deliver training uh, through, you know, your standard self-study training, uh, track uh, progress, et cetera. This is a lot more than that. This is more of a, of a total workforce management platform, right? This gives you the ability to not only deliver that self-paced training, uh, and report and track and assign just like you would in a, in a typical learning management system, but also gives you the ability to get into more of the testing side, right? And be able to create your own custom tests and deliver those within the learning management system. It gives you the ability to launch and track and, uh, and assign that simulation, that application type training um, so that you can kind of add that on to uh, whatever knowledge-based training you've been taking. And also gives you the ability to view, launch, report on, et cetera, uh, kind of some of those mobile forms side of things, including those skills verifications, right? One system gives you the ability to do all of that um, and also gives you the ability to take all that different type of content and build it out into a much larger curriculum path. Mm -hmm. um, this is certainly beneficial for, for a number of ways, um, having one system that everybody logs into, one system that not only from an administrative perspective, but from a student perspective, everybody's logging into the same place. Um, you're all launching that content or reporting on that content from the same place. So all the reports then obviously will have all of that different training. Right, so if I run a report on an individual, many times historically, you'd have to run a report for their training and then maybe run a report for their, for their on the job evaluations and then run a report maybe on some safety audits they perform, et cetera. What Fusion does is it brings all of that into one place. What does that mean for you from, from a results standpoint? Um, this is kind of, the, kind of the, the way that we feel that, that, that Fusion can help organizations like yourselves. When you adopt an integrated TPC fusion to streamline your workforce training management, you experience peace of mind knowing you are providing your workforce with more than just training. You're improving their livelihood by advancing their careers with increased retention, expedites knowledge transfer, and enhances safety and performance. Ultimately, obviously, this leads to overall success of your company. Kind of the way that we, we like to talk about, about the platform itself and, and how the fusion benefits you as an organization. With that being said, I'm actually going to jump into a demo of the Fusion system. We're gonna stay fairly high level. I'm not gonna to get too much into the weeds um, in, in this, but I wanna kind of make sure that, that everybody understands what, what Fusion is, what it's capable of doing, um, and really what it looks like and see some of the functionality firsthand. Uh, so we'll start here. And, and what we're looking at here is the login page. Um, you know, once you've logged in, what you see, kind of the My Training tab, right? This is going to show uh, all the courses that are currently assigned to me uh, as a student. It's going to show um, what courses are overdue, what I haven't started yet, what I, need to, what I need to continue, what I'm in progress on. It can show featured courses. So as an, as, an, as an administrator within the system, you've got the ability to push featured courses to your students so that they can see maybe some courses that they may want to self-enroll in. Um, and it's going to show the ability for you to, as an administrator, push different news articles uh, to your student base. Uh, and that could be anything, right? That could be links to, the, to different websites. That could be uh, web articles. Uh, that could be documents that, that you've produced that you want to push. And, and it's just more of a, of a learning news section uh, for your students. So again, when a student logs in, this is what they see. They see everything that's, that's currently assigned to them. They've got a couple different tabs up here across the top. And really the, the two that they'll see are the, the My Training and, and the Home tab. My Training is a little bit different in that it shows them and, and allows them to sort. So I wanna see what's, what I have in progress. Uh, I only wanna see what is overdue. Uh, maybe I wanna see what I've completed, if I've completed anything. I have not on, on this particular demo site. Um, what I have, have I not started that's currently assigned to me? 
I want to go and, and take a look at some more summary detail and that's going to show my progress in some bars here. And then I'm also going to be able to see the completion certificates uh, that I have that I have for courses that I've completed those completion certificates would be here. Again, all students will see this. We have the ability within fusion to separate students and administrators. The benefit is everybody's still going to go to the same spot to log in. They're all going to, you're all going to have your same branded login page. It's going to ask for a username and a password, whether you're a student or an administrator, everybody's going to the same spot. And then based on your login, that's going to determine what you're able to see once you get into the system. I'm also logged in here as an admin. So I'm going to be able to go to this admin section and I'm going to be able to see a little bit different information. Um, this is the admin page. This is the login page that you get to when you first log in from an administrative perspective. And what I want to do here is just talk through a couple of these different tabs over here on the left. We're first going to start with, with the settings tab and, and the settings tab is basically what we do to set up your site. So when you decide that you're going to come on board with TPC and, and start a fusion uh, platform application, we have a process where we spend an, a, a fair amount of time with you going through um, making sure we understand how you're going to use the system, what users are going to use the system, what different libraries you're going to want to have access to. And then we have an implementation team that takes all that information and they build out and they build out the site for you. And this is kind of the process for building out that site, right? We set up all of your, your information here. Um, you would have your own individual tenant within Fusion. So every organization has their own individual tenant. So there's not sharing of information across the different tenants or across different organizations. You'll have your own tenant, you'll have your own login link, your own URL that you'll go to to access the system. And when you access that system, you'll have your own landing page. And that, that login landing page will have your logo on it, if that's something that you want to add. Um, there's a number of other different things that we have the option to set up here with adding that logo. We do have the ability um, to support single sign-on through the SAML protocol. If that's something that we need to build out to interface with your existing systems, we have the ability to build out that, that single sign-on. Um, we do have the ability to uh, set up this site to be mobile form ready. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit, a little bit longer, but that's kind of on the configuration side. Um, so we've got all those, those capabilities as we go to initially set up the site. We also have the ability to add all of your users to the site. So once you send us all of your user information, we go in and we set up all those users in the site for you. So when the first time that you log in, you'll be able to have all your users there. You don't have to go in and add all your users one at a time or anything like that. You've got the, the users already there for you. What you then have the ability to do after that, that initial login or that initial setup, obviously, is you have the ability to add some of your own users. So if you, if you have new people that come on board, they need to get added to the system. A couple ways that you can add new users is through this import users option or through this new user. When I click on new user, that's just gonna take me through a process of adding that new person into the system. You can see that as, an, as a top level administrator, which is what I'm logged in as, you have the ability to set all the different authorities that that individual can have. Are they administ an administrator? Are they a student? Um, we have the ability um, to mimic your organization structure, which I'll talk about in a little bit around the location side of things. So you'll be able to determine if a user can only see their location when they log in, or can they see multiple locations? And again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We've also preloaded all the courses that you should have access to. So within Fusion, there are, you know, as, as we mentioned earlier, I think there's 137 technical skills courses now. There's over 130 safety courses that are available to you. Um, all the different skills verification um, modules, uh, of which there are about 57 of those. All those you, have, you can have access to depending on what you want to um, subscribe to uh, within, within your purchase. Um, so based on all that, we'll set up the courses for you so that when you log in, they're all ready to go. They'll be based on, you know, how, how do you want a student to go through the course? Um, do you want them to have to take the pretest? Do you want them to uh, not have a pretest and just go right to the content and then all the completions based on the post test? We have the ability to set up passing score that you want for both the pretest and the post test, as well as determining what the student sees when they submit a test, right? Are they seeing all their results? Uh, do you want to show them the questions that they missed? Do you want to show them the correct answer to those questions? All that comes in through the kind of the configuration document and all that gets set up before the first time that you ever log into the system. Obviously moving forward, 
you decide this is going well, I need to add an additional library. Maybe I want to add the mobile forms application. Maybe I want to add the skills verification modules. Maybe I want to add a safety library. Very easily, the, the, the team at, at TPC has the ability to go in and just add that content right to your library. A couple other things that are, that are done from the, from the very beginning, uh, you've got the ability to set up locations and you can set up a location hierarchy uh, that could in theory say, you know, I want to have a corporate level, I want to have a couple different regions and I want to have a couple different sites within those different regions, right? So we have the ability to mimic your organizational structure um, if we wanted to, to create things that way. The nice part about this is that as an administrator, as a top level administrator, you can set other administrators to only see maybe their location. So if I'm a, uh, a maintenance manager, let's say at the Washington location here, I can be set up such that when I log in, I can only assign content, run reports, uh, add users, et cetera, to just that location. Maybe I'm a regional uh, manager over the Northwest region. I can be set up at that level so I could have that same view over all the different locations that may be within that region. So you've got a way to kind of mimic your location structure within your organization and set up your administrator rights to kind of reflect that. We do also have the ability to group uh, different individuals or different pieces of content uh, within a tag section. So if you wanna separate your technicians by their job title, by their departments, you've got the ability to do that and then assign content based on that and assign programs based on that. So that's kind of the high level, how we set up the site, just to give you just an idea of what a site looks like when you first start into the system. Um, and now what I wanna do is get into a little bit more of the functionality side of things, right? How do I add additional users? How do I assign content? How do I create curriculum paths? How do I launch a mobile form? How do I launch a skills verification? Uh, how do I create a, a custom test that maybe I want to deliver? So let's start to talk a, a little bit about all of that. And we're gonna start in the user management section. Um, and we're gonna start with the users. Uh, I already showed you how to add a new user. But one thing that I didn't show you is you know, what it looks like to take a look at an existing user. So let's say I wanna look at Adam's student here. I can click on his name. I can see what he's currently enrolled in. So these are all the courses that Adam student is currently enrolled in. I can even take a look at, at detailed information. So let's say I wanna see how far he is on 203, 203 transformers and AC circuits. I can click on this details link and it'll take me in and it'll show me where that individual is at. Obviously not much time has been spent. He's only uh, in this particular class, he's in progress on the pretest. But I can see all the information there. I can see when it was started uh, and I can see uh, when it was last accessed all right there. The other thing that I can do from here is I can actually enroll this user into any of the courses. So I click on the enroll button, all the courses that he's not already enrolled in come up. I can select whatever courses I may want to enroll him in. As I do that, you can see that allows me to set a due date. I can say, you know, yeah, that's great. I want him to take these two courses and actually I want Adam to have them done by the end of the year. So we're gonna go through 1231. I'm gonna select that date and I'm going to enroll. And that user now has successfully been enrolled in those couple classes. So when Adam's student logs in, he'll see all this training in his training plan and he'll see due dates if I set due dates for those trainings. One other thing that you can do from here, and it's something that, that's, that's very interesting for, for me from an administrative perspective, is that I have the ability to impersonate this user. So I can click on impersonate and I can see exactly what Adam is seeing in the system. Uh, I can't tell you how helpful that is um, selfishly a little bit from a support perspective, uh, but from an administrative perspective in, within the organization for you to see exactly what your students are looking at, that impersonate option uh, is really beneficial. There's also program enrollments and we'll talk a bit about this, but, but program enrollments are the ability to enroll an individual into a defined curriculum. So maybe you set up a, as, as shown here, a qualified electrical worker program or maybe you set up a maintenance technician one program that has uh, the different pieces of content that you want your maintenance technicians to be uh, trained on. You've got the ability to enroll an individual in a particular program. And again, we'll talk about programs here in just a second. From a courses perspective, 
Um, very easy, what you can see here is a list of all the courses that are available uh, within this particular site. They're broken down into different content tabs. So if I just wanna see the technical skills courses, I can click on technical skills courses. If I just wanna see, let's see the uh, general safety series for safety, I can see what courses are available to me through that general safety series. Maybe I wanna see the, you know, what I consider my OSHA 10 program. I can see those here as well. When I select one of these courses, let's go back to the technical skills. And let's say we click on one-on-one -on -one reading blueprints. You can see that we've got a pretest, a number of different lessons, and then a post-test. This is the standard um, setup of our technical skills library. Pretest, number of different lessons. Within each lesson, you'll have a study guide, a number of different topics, and then an end of lesson quiz. So our technical skills courses are set up that way. If we go back to the courses section and maybe take a look at um, one of our safety courses, they're set up in much the same way, except for the fact that all the lessons are included within one grouping. So you have a pretest, that 30 minute or so video content, uh, and then the post test. One other thing that you noticed here probably as I was going through, the simulations. So these are the different application-based training that I was talking about earlier on troubleshooting electrical circuits, control circuits, motor circuits, and then what we call learning labs uh, that go along with each one of those. Um, those are all set up with here and shown here within your courses section as well. Then last but certainly not least, let's see if we can get into one of the Skills verification courses, which will also be set up here. These are some of the skills verification courses. And when we say skills verification, again, we're talking about kind of that on the job training evaluation. You know, how is an individual able to properly wire and evaluate a motor? Um, is the individual properly able to perform electrical motor testing? Um, is the individual uh, able to calibrate and adjust meters effectively? These are just a small sampling of the uh, skills verification on the job training modules that are available to you. And again, we'll get into that in just a second here and, and show you a little bit more of what those look like. The other thing that I wanted to mention here um, we talked a little bit about courses and, and the same thing applies um, if I wanted to assign any of these courses, I can click on any of the courses here. Let's say I want to say managing a training program, which are which in our, our mechanical maintenance, excuse me, maintenance management series. Um, I've got the ability to go into enrollments here and I can actually enroll users into the content this way. So same thing as I was doing with the users, so I'm just doing it in the opposite direction. One of the biggest benefits, and this is where we start to get into some of the really big benefits of Fusion. Um, you know, the benefit of, of creating a curriculum path, uh, creating a curriculum for your individuals to go through uh, is something that is, is extremely important within a learning management system within a platform like this. So we've, we've added this section called programs and programs again, as I mentioned, allows you to create curriculum for your individuals to go through. And I've created this demo program, for example, and this is where the benefit of having all this content within one platform uh, can be really be seen. I can create a, a program and within that program, I can include safety training. I can include technical skills training. I can include simulation training. I could include some of that on the job training evaluation, those skills verification modules. So all that is there within that, um, within that program. I can assign this program to somebody and that individual then has to go through this program, whether it's in that same or whether it's in that order or, or I can actually set these up to be free flow so that they have to go through these in any order. Um, so that's what the program does. Um, got the ability to create as many programs as you want and assign those program out, programs out to your students at any time. Okay, before I get into the reports, because I think that's kind of the last section we want to talk about, I do want to jump into a couple other um, features that, that Fusion offers. And one of those is Test Master. Um, Test Master gives you the ability to create uh, your own custom tests. So obviously, as, as you saw earlier, all the TPC technical and safety skills training, they, they all come with tests, both on the pretest and on the post-test side. Test Master allows you to take some, maybe you have some custom content that, that you're delivering now. Um, maybe you have some standard operating procedures that you want to turn into content. You've got the ability within Fusion to actually use this Test Master system to create those custom tests. 
um, to use questions that you've developed, to use a combination of questions that you developed and, a combina and, and those that TPC has developed to create kind of these custom tests. Um, this is what that test master system looks like. Uh, you can see I've created a couple demo tests here. Um, I'm using questions from our, stan our standard 101 Ready Blueprints course. Um, I do have the ability certainly to add additional questions, whether they be true, false, multiple choice, whatever the case may be to this test uh, in order to deliver that, those test questions through the Fusion application. jump back out of that and back into the admin section and I want to jump into the mobile form side of things. So we talk a little bit about skills verification and mobile forms. I'm going to jump into mobile forms here and I'm going to go to the forms builder and what you see here is a list of all of the skills verification modules that are available within my site. Everything that you're going to assign as we mentioned earlier is going to get assigned within the Fusion platform when you're actually creating mobile forms, um, editing the existing mobile forms, uh, if you want to preview a form, all that gets done here in this mobile forms builder section. So if I go to, for example, um, let's take a look at wire and circuit, wire a circuit and evaluate contractor. So when I click on this preview form, it's going to show me what that form looks like. Now, when I say what it looks like, the mobile forms application is just that. It's a mobile application. There's a Fusion application, TPC Fusion application within the both the Android and the iOS store that you have the ability to go and download. Once you've downloaded those, those, uh, that application, uh, enter your URL for your login page and you log into that system. This is what that form will look like actually delivered through that mobile app. So if I'm looking at my iPhone, if I'm looking at my iPad, if I'm looking at my Android tablet, whatever the case may be, um, you know, if I assign this wire circuit and value contractors for, um, you know, for an individual to go through and have a supervisor follow them and make sure that they're doing everything that they're supposed to be doing, that supervisor would pull up this form on their mobile app. So whether that be on their iPhone or their iPad or their Android tablet, whatever the case may be, and they would answer, enter all this information as they watch the individual perform the task. Right, what is the, um, you know, how much time was spent? Um, what type of event is this? Uh, what is the date that it was performed? Where all the safety, you know, what are the safety prerequisites? Uh, all that information. And then we get into more of the, did the individual follow the proper steps, right? Were they checking for loose connections? Uh, were they checking for free travel of armature? What were they doing? Were they following all that? Were they doing all that correctly? Um, did they do that? Yes. Was this performed correctly? No. Was this performed correctly? Yes. All that information that's all getting filled out on that iPhone as the supervisor is watching them perform the tasks. All that information then once they submit that, that information gets put into the form submission section. So if we go to this form submission section, these are all different forms that have submissions associated to them. Now these are different, these are custom built forms, right? So you're gonna see things a little bit different here, but let's say we're looking at um, a nightly inspection. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at this form. I can see that it was submitted and here's all the information that was sub submitted for this particular form, right? Um, were there any issues? Yes, no, there weren't any issues. Um, all this information, all the different fields that you see on that, uh, on that mobile form, whether it's a skills verification form or whether it's a safety audit or a nightly inspection like this, all those different fields are gonna show up here in this form submission section. I also have the ability to take a look on that same form, let's say, and I can compare different forms that have been submitted over a certain stretch of time. So these are the forms that have been submitted within the last uh, 30 days, I think this was. Um, you know, each form, what was the information that was submitted in each one of them. So you have the ability to kind of compare and contrast different, uh, different timings, uh, different, uh, different individuals that have entered information, uh, different evaluators uh, that, have, that have evaluated different individuals as they, as they perform a task. So you'll maybe be able to, to pick up on some things like, you know, this particular task within this, uh, within this evaluation is, is being wrong every time, right? They're getting that, that step wrong every time. You'll be able to pick up those, those different areas very quickly. 
If I go back to the forms builder side of things, as we mentioned, these are the skills verification modules. You do have the ability to create your own, own form. So I can actually go in and I create, can create a new form if I want to, which allows me to add, um, do I want to have a date time stamp? Do I want to uh, force the individual to take a picture to fill out that portion of the form? Uh, do I want to make sure I have a signature? Uh, am I checking temperatures on a machine at different time periods? What am I doing? How, how am I using this form? I've got the, the ability to create these custom forms um, by adding any different information that I want. Right, different types of labels, different types of item pickers, et cetera. Um, so keeping in mind, and we've got a couple customers that use these kind of forms to um, go into a certain area within their facility and, and run a, an, an inspection on a particular machine. They're taking temperatures at different, at different areas of the machine. Uh, they're listening for sounds. They're marking um, you know, different things that they see um, within uh, different measurements that they take uh, within this form that actually gets created. Lastly, I want to spend just a little bit of time. I do definitely want to make sure we leave time for questions, but I do want to spend just a little bit of time on the reporting side of things. Um, so any good learning management system, any good platform is going to have a reporting engine that's associated with it. Um, Fusion is no different. It has a reporting engine that gives you the ability to report on activity that has occurred, uh, on scores that have been achieved, on logins uh, that, have, that have occurred as well, um, and also gives you the ability to schedule reports. So let's say, for example, I jump into one of these reports and we'll jump into the participant status summary report. Uh, we'll run that and you can see this particular report is going to show me that everything, this is going to show me everything that's currently actively assigned uh, within this particular uh, tenant, right? So I can see that I've got all these different courses that are assigned. Of those, 53 are not started, 32 are in progress, three have been completed, and, and I've got a lot overdue because I don't spend a lot of, as much time on training as I probably should. Um, the one thing that I want to show you here is you do have the ability to not only run this report at any given time, but you also have the ability to schedule that report. And I can create a report that gets sent out via email uh, based on whatever filters I want, um, whether that's daily, as you can see here, daily on, on uh, weekly on Mondays, weekly on Thursdays, first day of the month, 15th day of the month, last day of the month, I've got the ability to set up these scheduled reports and have them emailed to whomever we, we want those emailed to. So not only can you go in at any given time, get real time information, um, but you also have the ability to kind of schedule that reporting to go out. And again, those are reports around activity, around test scores, around login history, et cetera. And then you can actually see a list of all of your scheduled reports. So I know that was kind of quick, a very high level view of what Fusion has to offer, um, but I just wanted to jump in and give you kind of that high level, um, how you can use Fusion to manage your training program, whether it's by using programs to, uh, to build out your curriculum path, um, whether it's just assigning content, whether it's, you know, using Fusion as a platform to launch uh, technical skills training, safety training, um, simulations, uh, the mobile form application for skills verification, whatever the case may be, uh, Fusion is here to kind of give you that platform uh, to not only launch but track uh, progress on all of that. And Ryan, I think that kind of concludes my portion, so I'll kick it back to you and, and let's, uh, let's take a look and answer some questions that we may have. Sounds great, Tim. Thank you so much. Uh, there's a lot here, as, as everyone can see, kind of built into the Fusion functionality. So if you're thinking about your use case, hey, let's talk about it right now. Uh, the Q&A line is open. We got a few questions rolling in, so feel free to keep them going. We can uh, hang out and talk for a little bit about uh, learning management, about tr how to manage training in a digital format. Um, and how to maybe set up your programs or do on the job training with mobile forms. Let's talk about it. So the first question uh, comes to us um, about SCORM files there, Tim. Um, uh, are we able to show an example um, of how a SCORM file might present within the TPC training LMS? Um, and what kind of training will, or what kind of um, experience will a person have uh, viewing a SCORM file within the system? So certainly, so all, all of our content is built in SCORM, right? So, so the, best, the best thing to show probably then uh, would just be um, a piece of our content 
Um, so if I go into um, the LMS side of things here, and we go to one of our courses, so let's just jump into AC control equipment. Uh, let's expand this topic here and we'll jump into one of these. So this is what the content looks like uh, when you actually get into, uh, we'll just start this from the beginning. Service factor and time rating, motors wiring, mounting bracket, motors nameplate. Let's get to one that's not a quiz slide. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, just just to give you an idea, this is this is the content and, and what it looks like when it's delivered in a the TPC player. So the TPC player um, will. Um, kind of deliver this content in a number of different ways. There'll be, in this example, you've got text with an image, you'll have text with animations, uh, you'll have video that plays in, in certain instances. Um, so all these different types of content get delivered through a SCORM package this way. On top of that, and I think more maybe what the question was asking was, can you take your SCORM package, right? Maybe you've created a course in a SCORM packaging application like Articulate Storyline or, or Captivate or something like that, right? Can you take that content and can you load that into the into learning management? The answer is yes. The, the, the Fusion platform has the ability to load that content and it's going to play just like you've seen it play in, if you've loaded it anywhere else. It's gonna play within this same window just like you're seeing here. Um, so I, I don't have any examples uh, that I can share here. I don't have anything loaded directly to this site, but yes, you, you do have the ability to load um, SCORM compliant packages uh, into this system to deliver. It'll look very similar to what you're seeing here. Awesome, and, and kind of to piggyback on that, uh, how about other files like Word, PDF, PowerPoint, or zip files? Um, would they be kind of on a view only basis within the browser or can they actually be downloaded from the LMS? Uh, no, they would they would not be downloaded from the LMS. They can be uploaded to the LMS, right? So if you have a, a PowerPoint presentation that, that you want uploaded for some reason, you, you have the ability to load that as an asset and then take that asset and add it to, to a course. Um, so yeah, that is an option. Um, those are all capable of being loaded into the system. Um, yeah. Definitely, but but you, once they're uploaded into the system, right? They're in, they're loaded in, into Fusion, so they're not downloadable from there. Okay, gotcha. Um, question here about uh, Test Master. Um, yep. So, in in addition to the Test Test Master, um, are we able to upload or generate our own curriculum uh, as well, specific to our industry, and assign that to employees? Um, and to go along with that, can videos be integrated into that curriculum and video content as well? Uh, a lot in that question. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I would say yes, loading your own content and delivering that is possible, as we've already mentioned. Um, taking the TPC content and creating a curriculum that is more industry specific is certainly possible, right? So it doesn't mean that you have to assign all the courses if maybe you are in the pulp and paper industry. Right, and maybe some of the courses don't apply to you. Uh, certainly, you can be assigning content that that applies to that pulp and paper industry. And we actually have some some examples of some industry specific content uh, that can be delivered. And, and you know, kind of taking content and and um, kind of chopped it up uh, for for different industries. So yeah, that that is possible. Um, as far as loading your own video content, you can certainly do that. Um, it would sit outside of the standard TPC technical courses or safety courses, but you have the ability to load your own content. So that could all become part of a program, um, right, that you create, so certainly. Awesome, and uh, I think one of our final questions here, Tim, um, can you give us an idea of how many courses might be included in each library, uh, whether it be the technical skills, the safety libraries, um, and just overall total um, within TPC different libraries? Sure, yeah, so uh, I believe the technical skills training library now is 137 courses. Um, it's about 800 lessons or so, uh, so about 800 hours worth of training. Uh, the safety library is, is about 100. 452 now actually I think the total is um, and those are 30 to 45 minute uh, courses that are all video based content. Uh, there's 57 uh, skills verification modules 
Uh, so those OJT and those on the job training evaluations that are available to you, there's 57 of those. And then obviously, as I mentioned, you've got the ability to create as many uh, mobile forms uh, as you want to go along, along with those around safety audits or site inspections or whatever those might be. Um, and then uh, there are um, within to within the uh, kind of cloud-based version of the simulation side of things, there are uh, three simulations and four learning labs, which are kind of a little bit more of a learning guided section to those uh, that are available within the cloud-based. Um, within the installed version of the simulation product, uh, I believe there are now seven simulations that are available. Got it. Um, so a few more questions flowing in, and I think we have Great. some time to answer. And this is probably where you expect this might be going, Tim, and that is how much does this all cost um, a, a company to get involved with? Um, how much might it set someone back uh, to get access to TPC Fusion and start using it for themselves and um, maybe get some uh, insight about how that pricing might be structured or, um, or d differentiable sure. between different clients? Sure. Yeah. I, the answer, unfortunately, is it's very wide ranged, right? It's all dependent on a few things. One, how many libraries do you want access to? Are you going to have access to just the technical skills library? Do you want to add on safety? Do you want to add on the mobile forms application? Do you want to add on simulations? All of that, right? Factors into the cost. Uh, also, the number of users that you're going to have accessing the system and the number of users are going to be accessing kind of each section of, of the system uh, also goes into cost. Um, you know, it can be anywhere from the um, from a small dollar amount in, in the few thousands to, you know, large corporate organization structures that are, are much more than that, um, you know, up into the 50, 60, 70 thousand dollar range. I mean, it's it's all dependent and even higher. Honestly, it's it's all dependent on those different factors. Right. And that's how the, that's how the pricing is, is created. Uh, obviously, the, the, the sales team um, that, that will, will kind of give you that, that email and, and phone number that you can contact, you know, they're the group that, that would have a lot more information. And, and, you know, really, we make sure that we're not only are, are we pricing things that, that are competitive within the market, we're pricing things that, that make sense for you as an organization. Um, and we're, we're setting up the program that makes sense for you as an organization. If you only have, you know, 10 users that are going to be accessing, but, um, you know, we're not going to try to sell you a 20 user, a 30 user, uh, or, you know, a, a larger, a larger program, right? We want to, let's, let's get started with this. Let's see how, how things go and then let's grow from there. That sounds great. And with that, I think we're about wrapped up here, Tim. Thank you so much for being here and for presenting today. And thank you for all for being here um, and just getting to see a little bit of this new technology out here for training and learning management. Again, if anyone here has additional questions about you know pricing and cost and not only that, but just uh, maybe what are some best practices for learning management? Uh, definitely got a lot of the experts out out there. So feel free to just call us, you know, no, we don't charge you for these phone calls. <laughs> you can talk to us about basically anything uh, on the training. We're always happy to um, chat. And in fact, maybe Tim or I will be able to chat with you about this kind of stuff. Um, email us, sales at tpctraining.com. Our expert consultants are always here and ready to talk, as well as on the telephone. We're all available and have taken our office phones everywhere we are right now. And that is 847-808-4000. Uh, you can get in contact with any one of us. So thank you very much again for being here, everyone, and have a great day.